Hello, Calc Kids. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to focus in on convergent and divergent infinite series. That sounds really complicated, okay? Hopefully this won't be too bad for you. It just depends on if you've even seen series before. You, some kids have it all the way back in Algebra 1. Some kids have it in Algebra 2, or they don't see it until pre-calculus. It just kind of depends. And then some kids don't ever see it at all until they get to Calculus BC. So this first lesson of Unit 10 is going to set us up for our understanding for the rest of the, of the next 14 lessons in Unit 10. So you want to make sure you really do have a good grasp of what series and sequences are and how this works. Let's remember a few things. And that is writing out terms of a sequence. A of n is going to be a rule for coming up with the terms of each sequence. So if we say what is the very first term, so that first term would be plug in the 1, you get 1 plus negative 2 to the first power, and that equals negative 1. If I plug in a 2 right there, then the second term would be 5. If I plug in a 3 and work through it, you would get a negative 7, okay, and then so forth. So that's the fourth term, the fifth term, and so that's what this sequence thing here says. It's a collection of numbers that are in one-to-one -one correspondence with positive integers. What I mean by that is this is the first term, that's a positive integer, the first term is a negative 2. So this is just a made-up sequence here. I just made up some numbers here. So the second term, the second number in the sequence is a 4. The third is a negative 26 over 6. So that's the only number. It's not going to be something else. The third term has to be, or the third number in the sequence has to be that number. It can't be something else. That's what this one-to-one -one correspondence is referring to. All right, so there's the first five terms. All right, so hopefully that is a review of something you've seen before. This is just a sequence of numbers. Now, a monotonic sequence, that this you might not have heard of before. Monotonic basically means it either never decreases or it never increases. So what I'm talking about is if I were to graph the numbers, it would be going up, 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 up. It might flatten out and become uh, like not increase at all, but it's not going to turn around and decrease. That would be considered monotonic sequence where the numbers just get bigger and bigger and bigger or start to slow down, but still get bigger or uh, vice versa. It could be getting decreasing, getting smaller and smaller. So you'd say that the first number is smaller than the second number, which is smaller than or equal to the third number and so forth till you get to the last term. Or it's larger than the next term, which is then larger than the term after that, which is larger than the next term and so forth. That's monotonic. Bounded is where you have a maximum on the upper bound or a minimum on the lower bound. And the whole set of numbers of A of N, the sequence, the whole thing is bounded if both of these are true. So this is just saying you've got a maximum value, a minimum value is bounded below. And then if it's bounded on top and bottom, then the whole thing is considered bounded. Okay, so now this leads us to our next group of things, which is infinite series and partial sums. So an infinite series is when you have a sequence of numbers and you're adding them all up. So you have the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, and how many terms? All the way up to an infinite number of terms and you're adding them all up. That is an infinite series. Now, some of you'd be thinking, if you're just adding all these numbers up, isn't that just going to go to infinity? Not always. Sometimes, yes, but not always. So you're going to see what we're going to say. If it went off to infinity, that would be considered diverging, which we'll discuss. Now, a partial sum is where you take the sum of the first n terms. So like if I said the first five terms, s of five, that partial sum would be the first plus the second plus the third plus the fourth plus the fifth. That's what s of 5 would be, the adding up the first five terms. So that's a partial sum. So the difference between them, and this is important for you to understand to be able to answer questions correctly. a of n is an expression that gives the nth term in a sequence. s of n is an expression that gives the sum of the first n terms of the sequence. So you see the difference? a of n is a specific term s of n is the addition of all of the terms up into that number. So get that written down, Let me, and let's do a quick example. So let's find a of 4 and s of 4. a of 4, really simple. a of 4 is just the fourth term. 1, 2, 3, 4, it equals 8. Whereas s of 4 is equal to the first four terms added together, so it's 2, plus 4, plus 6, plus 8. Add those all together, 10, 20, you get 20. So you see the difference? a of 4 is only the fourth term. s of 4 is the addition of all of the first four terms adding up. Now that leads us to, if you have an infinite series, 
So you, go, you do a summation of all, of all of the terms a of n up into infinity. That is exactly the same thing as saying you take s of n and you have n approach infinity. The limit as n approaches infinity. So now we're going back to limits again. These two things are equivalent. And that's an important thing to understand because sometimes you the problem might give you a of n or the problem might give you s of n and you have to understand which they're talking about. And that if you have to find this, but they only give you s of n, then you just got to know, oh, I'm just taking n as n approaches infinity of s of n. Okay, you'll see here with a couple examples we're going to do. All right, now it's definition time. So we have convergent and divergent series. So for the infinite series of n to infinity of a of n, the nth partial sum is this. We've already talked about this. That's the partial sum. If the sequence of the partial sum, meaning, and when I say the sequence of the partial sums, meaning you look at s of 1, then you look at s of 2, then you look at s of 3, then you look at s of 4, s of 5, and so forth. So you're adding up the first term. Then you look at the next term. Then you look at all of these. So you just keep looking at those. If those numbers are getting closer and closer to a specific number, if it converges to s, if it approaches a specific number, that's what this is, then the series also converges or approaches a certain number, that same num number s. I, and that s is kind of confusing. Like maybe I should have used a different letter, letter there. It's just saying we're going to approach a specific number, a converge to a value. So then the limit s is called the sum of the series. Now, the likewise, you can do it the other way if, if it diverges. So if you look at these partial sums and you're adding them all up and they don't seem to be approaching a number at all as you get larger and larger and larger, then it's diverging. Okay, so and if s of n, if s of n is diverging, then the series is also diverging. All right. So basically, when we try to answer this, we really look at the partial sums. That's what we're trying to figure out what the infinite series is doing. OK, so let's look at the first one. Does the series converge or diverge for this? So the, the quickest way to start doing this is let's look at s of 1. First term is going to be the sum of the first term is just 1 over 2. You plug in a 1 because remember, this is your a of n. All right. Well, that doesn't tell us much. Let's look at the next one. The second term is going to be the sum of the first two terms. So it's the first term, which is 1 half, plus the second term, which is plug in a 2. You get 1 fourth. All right, well, 1 half plus 1 fourth is 3 fourths because I'm doing this in my head. All right, now that's good. Let's look at the third one. The sum of the first three terms is going to be the sum of the first two, which is 3 fourths, plus the third term. And the third term is 1 over 2 to the third. 1 8th. And then that equals uh, 3, 6, 7, 7 8 Trust me on that. I know my fractions. And then let's do this fourth term. We'll stop after the fourth term. So the fourth term is going to be the first three terms added together, which is 7 8 plus the fourth term, which is 1 over 2 to the 16, 2 to the fourth, excuse me. That's just 16. And then add it all up. That equals 15 sixteenths. Right, so look at the sequence of these the sum, these partial sums. The partial sum is 1 half. The next one is 3 fourths. The next one is 7 eighths. The next one is 15 sixteenths. Can you see what number it's getting closer and closer to? It looks like it's getting really close to the number 1. So I would say it's probably converging. But that would just be a guess on my part. It looks like it's converging to the number 1. I'm going to show you a little trick on this problem of how to do problem number seven. So this is maybe on the left side of your notes, you want to write this down. This is in your practice. This is for problem number seven. And there will be a problem like this on the mastery check. So please pay attention to what I'm about to do. I'm going to show you how to figure out what S of N is. Because if we know S of N, it is a ton easier. Why? Because if we know S of N, we can just take the limit as N approaches infinity. And then we're done. So Knowing S of N makes this a lot easier if you can't see it from the partial sums. Okay, so it just depends on the strategy of the problem for these ones that we're starting off with. So this is going to be, so here's the strategy how you do this. You write out the first term, 1 over 2 to the N plus. Now I'm going to write out the second one, but I'm not going to simplify it. I'm just going to plug in the 2 right there. Plus, I'm going to write the second one, but plug in the 3. That's the, excuse me, I mean the third one. So the third term is 1 over 2 to the third. Plus, and then you could just keep going until dot, 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 until you get to the last term, which is 1 over 2 to the nth power. All right, that is S of n. So how can we make a rule out of this? 
you focus in here on this first term, that term is a one half. What I'm going to do is multiply both sides by one half. So if I multiply the left by one half, I get one half S of N. And then that equals, and now I'm multiplying every single one of these terms by a one half. So that makes this become one half squared plus one over two cubed plus one over two to the fourth plus dot, 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 all the way up until we get to the last term, which would then be uh, two raised to the n plus one. It's one more because I have an extra one half in there. All right, now that you've done this, you subtract these two lines. So again, you're gonna do this on, again on problem number seven. So you refer to this example. So we say s of n minus one half s of n. We're going to take this full line and subtract this full line. Well, if you do that, notice what happens. You have this is going to be subtracting from this one and they cancel. This one over two to the third is gonna cancel with this one over two to the third because you're subtracting this bottom line. And so that one is gonna cancel with the one over two to the fourth all the way up. And then this one's gonna cancel with the one over two to the end that was there. They're all gonna start canceling. And the only things you have left that didn't cancel was were these two terms. So we're gonna write out that this equals one half, and then we subtracted this line, right? So it's minus one over two to the n plus one. So to simplify the left side, that's just one half s of n equals one half minus one over two to the n plus one. Now multiply both sides by two because I wanna get rid of that one half. So that leaves us with s of n is equal to, multiplied by two, this gives us one minus, and then multiply this one by two, it cancels out one of the halves on the twos on bottom. So it's just one over two to the n. Okay, now that's important because this is now s of n. And what can I do? If I wanna figure out what the series is from one to infinity, you just take the limit as n approaches infinity. So if you have this approach infinity, the limit as n approaches infinity of s of n is going to equal this portion, this fraction becomes a zero, so it's just one minus zero, and it equals one. So it converges to one, just like we thought it did from here. One half, three, four, seven eighths, 15, 16, it's getting really close to one. But this is the proof of exactly how you do it. So uh, there will be a problem, again, that you have to do it this way, but a lot of times for these problems, you could just start writing out the partial sums and be able to figure it out that way. The next part, we're just gonna practice with a calculator how to plug this stuff in. So if I want to know what is S of 200, what does that equal? That would be adding up the first 200 terms of the sequence. Well, that's gonna take forever. So let's use a calculator to do that. Uh, grab your calculator. And now if you don't have a TI-84, you will have to look up how to do this. My apologies, I can't do it on every possible calculator out there. Let's make this small enough so you can see in the screen. All right, so how you do this is, on my calculator, it is math. You know how we do math eight, math nine for derivatives and integrals? Well, down here at math zero, math zero is summation. Awesome, there it is. Okay, so again, if you don't have an 80, a Texas instrument, that's okay. Just look up how to do summation notation on your particular calculator. So just Google that so you make sure you can do this. And then we're gonna say the n equals, so here we have n equals, so we're gonna just say a variable. So the variable button is there. And we're gonna go from one, up until 200. And then we have to type out the uh, a sub n. So it's 10 divided by, now be careful here, you wanna make sure you get that whole uh, denominator in there. So I'm gonna distribute the n and make it x squared, instead of an n, it's x, x squared plus two x. So I just distributed it to make sure that I don't make any mistakes with my denominator. And there we go, 7.4503. So the first 200 terms, add it all up together is 7.45. That's weird, huh? You'd think it'd be bigger, but it's not because you have a fraction here. And so the numbers you're adding are getting smaller and smaller. Now, let, now we'll do it up to a thousand. So I'm just gonna go second enter because that'll give my previous entry. And then I can just scroll over here, click, 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 change this 200 to a thousand. That's a hundred thousand. Hit enter. And what is it? 7.49, let me copy that over here. All right, so the 200 was 7.45. I'm gonna just do a couple more decimals, zero, three. And then the first thousand terms, the sum of the first thousand terms, that partial sum would be 7.49. So you can see it looks to be that this, this uh, series is probably a 
approaching 7.5. We could do even larger numbers and you can see it's going to get closer and closer to 7.5. So that's a way you can use a calculator to help you figure these partial sums out uh, pretty quickly. And our last problem, this one's going to be pretty quick and easy. That is, does this one converge or diverge? Well, I'm giving you one that diverges just because yeah, I wanted to make sure you saw what happens. So the first term, let's look at this first term. Plug in the 1. It equals 1. The second term, this, excuse me, the second term of the sum, so the sum of the first two is going to be 1 plus, and now we plug in a 2. Well, that equals 3. The next one, the first 3 is going to be the first two added together, which is 3 plus, plug in a 3. So then that equals 6. All right, let's do the next one. 4. So that's going to be the first three terms, which is 6 plus, plug in a 4. Okay, that equals 10. What's the fifth one? Fifth one is going to be the first four terms added up, plus, plug in the 5. That equals 15. Well, what's going on here? We've, we started off at 1, then 3, 6, 10, 15. It, it is monotonic. It's just increasing over and over again, but it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not converging to a specific number. So we want this sum, as we look at these next numbers, the, si the sixth partial sum, the seventh, the eighth, and so forth, it, we want it to go towards a specific number. And if it doesn't, that means it's diverging. So that's, uh, we just say it diverges for this problem. All right, we've covered it all. So rock that mastery check. Let's get this foundation set up so we can do better in our next lessons. And I'll see you back in our next one.